Hey developers, today I'm going to show you a few examples of Vue.js's reactivity using ref, two refs, reactive, and I'll show you how it works. So the reason you may be interested in this is because with Vue.js 3, these are the tools that you really want to use when you're using the composition API or when you're using the script setup. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all the tips and tricks. I think this will really help you out if you are running a production app or if you're learning Vue.js 3 for the first time. You really need to understand these the, the different ways reactivity works and these different tools that you have. Okay, so let's show you the basics of reactivity. So first, I'm gonna create a new variable called count. And I'm gonna create an h1 here and show the count. And you can see right away, it shows up in my template. But is it reactive or not? So if I create a, I don't know, a button that says press me, and I add a click handler to it that all it does is increment count, will it work? So for those of you who know Vue, you'll realize it doesn't work because this actually isn't reactive at all. So in other languages and other frameworks, you might use something called use state. In Svelte, you actually don't have to do anything, but in Vue, you actually import in this thing called ref, and there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm gonna show you ref first from Vue, and then you kind of surround the variable uh, that you want inside ref. And if we want to, I oh know, I'll put it at one. And you can see here, now it works. So every time I click this, it's being added in. So that's perfect. Now, what if we want to manipulate this ref inside this script at this top here? So I'm gonna create a new function. It's called double. And what double is gonna do, it's gonna take this count and it's gonna double it. And you can see right away, I have volar, which is an extension for VS Code, and it auto added this dot value here. So anytime you're inside the script and you're using refs, use the dot value to access, access the value and to manipulate it. So in this case, I want this count dot value to uh, times equal two. Well, we'll do it like this. We'll do count dot value times two. So every time you, uh, every time the function runs, it doubles it. And if I wanted to, I'll just add in double to this click handler. And now when I press it, it doubles as we expect it. So it's working, that's awesome. Now there's a couple of other little things with ref that we should take a look at. The first one is called isref, and the other one's called unref. So unref is a way to access the value of a reactive proxy variable inside view. So this count.value, if I want to, I can just do unref and then pass in count, and I don't have to put dot value. And essentially what it does is you can wrap any sort of variable in here and if it's a ref, it'll it'll display the value. If it's not a ref, it'll display the value as well. So this is unref here and it's still working the same way. I don't see people using this too often, but it's nice it's there. The other one is isref. In fact, what unref does is just uh, what they call syntactic sugar to do this. So I can do check equals isref this, what this does is you can pass it a variable and it'll give you a true or false depending on if you actually add it as a ref. And in this case, I can just pot, pass in this count, once again, not with the value. And uh, if it's a is ref, I can then just pass in, I can do the count dot value. But if it's not, I'll just show the value like this. And if I console, well, in this case, yeah, I'll console log this check it should be exactly the same as what we see on the screen. So if I do this and I press it and then I look inside the console here, you can see here it's 8, 16, 32. So it's exactly the same as the number here. And it's just a, a little nice little function that you may need to use. So another thing you should probably know about ref is that if you've come from the view two days, you know there's something called ref that you add on to uh, inside the template. And you can actually still do that with view three. So let's say this button right here, I want to get access to it inside this script. So I just type in ref and I don't know, I'll call it button. And then inside here, I can do const button uh, and I'll do ref here. And what this will do is it'll actually give access and I can put, I don't know, an empty string in there. This will actually get access to the template, this button in the template. So now let's say instead of doing this check here, I'm going to actually grab the button and it has a value just like it's a reactive variable. If I clear this and I hit the press me, you can see right here at the bottom, it says button. 
So you can see it's working as, as it did before. Uh, now I could do manipulations to this button value. It's like an HTML element. I could change the text. I can do whatever I need, but now there it is. So another really common thing that you might see is something called reactive. So let me show you an example of that. And just to make this easier, I'm going to comment some of this out. And I'm gonna comment this out and this out. I'm gonna create something called cube. So I'm gonna create const cube and it's gonna be reactive. And I'm gonna add in a couple of properties to this cube. It's gonna have a length of, I don't know, 10, a width of 20, and a height of 33. So what I really like to use this is when I need to go in and ha I have a bunch of variables and instead of doing ref a bunch of times, I wanna kind of all group them together, I use reactive. Uh, it's personal preference. Some people use reactive in every single project. Some people use ref. Uh, it's up for debate what's better. But now you can see here, I can come in here. I can put this H1. I got my cube. And if I did this right, I should be able to grab like cube dot, I know, length. And my auto sense did recognize it. There's 10. So I could say, okay, length is 10. And I don't know, I can even, I don't know, if I wanted to change this, um, I can delete this and I call this on a width. And then I'll change this and I'll delete this to height. If I did this right, so here they all are and they're all showing up here correctly. But you can see here, this is cube.length, cube width, cube.height isn't the easiest way to do it. So there's a couple of helpers that make it so we don't have to constantly dot cube.length. Now you might be thinking, well, yeah, I can destructure this, right? So I can do let, I know, length, uh, width, height, like this, width, height, and then have it equal cube. Well, uh, it actually won't work because these are reactive variables and it just doesn't work that way. So to do it the way, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, I'll show you the one the harder ways. There's something called two ref and two refs. So it's kind of confusing, but let's look at this first one. It's called two ref. And when I use two ref, I could do something like this. I could do const length equals, and then I do two ref, that's without an S. And I pass in first the object, which is the cube, and then the, the strength, the key. So in this case, it would be, I don't know, length. And now, instead of doing cube.length here, I could just do length. And if I save it, and I come back over here, it's still working, it's exactly the same as it was before. But you can see this is not much better than having to add in a bunch of refs and getting the values from each. Because you would have to do this the three times. I'd have to do like one for width, one for height, and one for, uh, you know, uh, basically one width, height, and length. Another way of doing this is to use something called two refs. And I'll show you how that works. So instead of doing two ref here, we do two refs, and the only difference has an S at the end. And then you can destructure it out. So we have length, width, height. And now I can do two refs and then pass in cube. And now I have access to all three of these. So I can come back over here. I can delete this cube, width, height. Cool, and it's still working as it did before without any errors, and all we did is made it much easier using this two refs. Now there's one ref that's really interesting that uh, I'll show you real quickly. I'm gonna copy and paste this for uh, the sake of time. It, it's called the custom ref. So if we come back over here, and I just copy and paste this, I have something called use to bounce ref here, and I'm going to add this uh, custom ref. And it's a really a way that you can create your own special reactive variables and you can set certain options when they get set and certain options when they need to be returned. So in this case, this is an option that every time you set it, you can set a delay here. So like a second or, second or two later, it will display. And you essentially the way you create it is you have to create, you wrap the return in a custom ref and then you have to pass it a function that has a track and trigger. And the track always is put in the git and the trigger is always put into the set. And it's a way for, it's a ba basically a way to create your own reactive variable. So in this case, anytime you git used a bounce ref, it'll just return the value. But when you set it, 
it'll take a timeout, which you can set here, uh, about basically like a second, and then it'll set the value. So let's see how we can get this working. And if I, let's make double check to make sure I did this right, I'm missing a ending bracket. And now I should be able to try it out. So I'm gonna, I'm going to just real quickly comment these out and I want to test it out. So I'm gonna create just right underneath this function. And this is probably something you would add into its own file and then import it in. But I'm gonna call it, I don't know, test. And I'm gonna go use to bounce ref and I'm gonna pass in a string of hello. And then I'm gonna create a new function called change, make it simple as possible. And all this is gonna do is gonna take the test.value and equal to George. So if I come back over here to my template, I'm going to put back an H1 and I'm going to use this test that I just created. And if I did this right, uh, it should show up. And to make sure this works, I'll move this outside of this. So now it's outside of it. So here's my hello. I'm gonna add back in my button. I'm gonna call it press me. And I'm gonna add a click handler and it's gonna run this change. So now I press it, I waited 1001, cool, it changed. So it took about a second and then it, up, it changes. I'll do that again. Press it, 1001, cool, it updated. So it's not instantaneous. I guess I could even make it like, I know even longer if I wanted to. So if you press it, 1001, 1002, 1003, there it goes. So now it's been updated. So this is a way you can do like specific uh, reactivity. I haven't used this too often, but it's cool that it's there. Now, the last thing I wanna show you real quickly is that this syntax where we're using this ref, it, there is going to be some ref, what they call a sugar, syntactic sugar with it that's coming in a future release. I believe you can work with it right now, but you have to do some, some extra work to set it up. But essentially what it'll do is you'll have this variable, this dollar sign variable that you'll be able to put around the ref. And then you'll be able, essentially you can put double, uh, double uh, dollar signs to be able to get the underlying refs and you can basically create reactive variables. So it looks like kind of a neat little syntactic sugar to uh, handle refs and not having to put dot value everywhere. So uh, you may be seeing this in upcoming videos. As soon as it lands, I'll definitely be doing a video on it. So if you guys like this video, make sure you click that like button. And also uh, I'll give a shout out. I do do mentoring. So if you're interested in to deep dive into Vue.js or your career and you need some help, uh, I'll put a link to my, my mentoring. Uh, I do, uh, I have a few spots open, like barely, I think I only have like two spots open. So if you want to do that, yeah, check that out. Thanks, I appreciate it.